In this video, we're going to go through how to create a store. First steps in creating your store is to create your walls and floor. So using my rectangle tool and clicking once with my left mouse, I'm just going to input my dimensions for my walls. Once my pattern pieces are set up, I can then use my gizmo tool in my 3D workspace to position my walls exactly where I'd like them to be. An important thing to note when creating your room is you need to constantly move around your viewpoint when working with your gizmo tool. This is going to ensure that all of your pieces are exactly where you want them to be and nothing's floating around or actually way off to the left or anything like that. Also, when moving your pattern pieces with the gizmo tool, you can hold down shift to constrain your movements if you'd like. And again, I'm gonna just keep adjusting my wall a little bit and continuously moving around my viewpoint to make sure that my walls are actually sitting exactly where I want them to. I'm also going to make sure that my walls intersect a bit with each other. This is just going to ensure that no light comes through when I go to the render window. And I can just keep on fine tuning this a little bit. Once my walls are exactly placed where I'd like them to be, I can then move on to creating my floor using the exact same steps, so my rectangle tool, left click, and inputting my dimensions. I can then switch to my selection tool, hotkey Q, in my 3D window, and use my gizmo tool to adjust and move my floor around. Now, I made my floor a larger dimension than my walls. I did this because I wanted my floor to completely encompass the same 3D space as my ground. And again, I'm going to make sure that my floor intersects with my wall just a little bit. And I'm going to change around my viewpoint so that I know it's not hovering above the ground that much, but just a little bit. Now that my floors and walls are set up in my 3D workspace as I'd like them to be, I'm now just going to arrange them in my 2D workspace. And now I'm going to add a window. I'm going to use my internal tool here, my internal rectangle tool. And using my guideline that I have here, I'm then going to make sure that my window is placed exactly where I want it to be from the top of my, my wall. So I'm good with that placement, and now I'm going to input my dimensions for my window and hit OK. Going back to my transform pattern tool, hotkey A, I can then place my window at that guideline that I created before. And again, holding down shift, I can constrain my movement. Now I can just right click and say cut and sew. This is then going to create a pattern piece and that I can bring out to be my window. Now most windows have a little binding around them, so I'm going to do this step again. Going to my internal rectangle tool, typing my dimensions, placing my window exactly where I'd like it to be, right clicking and saying cut and sew. Now I have all the pattern pieces I need for my window. Once that's all set, I can now go into my fabrics. So here I'm going to copy this fabric a few times and start to assign it to certain pattern pieces by using my assign button. Now once my fabric's applied, I'm going to now change the type of fabric for my window to be glass. So here in my property editor under materials, I'm gonna choose glass. I can now again check to make sure that this is assigned to the right pattern pieces with that assign button. Once that's all set, I can then go to my store folder in my library, 
We cover how to add folders in our library in our Clo Beginner's Guide videos. Here I can just drag and drop these textures onto my fabric. And I can continue to edit these textures with my color palettes. And I can also change around my texture using my texture editor here and adjust the sizing along with the placement of my brick. Now my final step is I'm going to change the thickness of my fabric pieces. So here in my property editor, additional thickness rendering. Here I'm going to change the thickness. Now this does not affect the fabric, it just affects the appearance of the pattern piece. Adding these different thicknesses is just going to create another layer of realism to the store. Once all my thicknesses are added, I'm now just going to select all of my pattern pieces, right click, and deactivate them. I'm doing this so that I can continuously work quickly in my 3D workspace. Once that's all set, I'm going to go into my folder, select my OBJ, right click, and add my first object. I'm going to make sure load type is add and object type is avatar. And then I'm going to hit OK. And now I've added my wrap. And here I am again just going to use my gizmo tool to move this out and adjust this to where I want it to be. So here I can rotate this. Again, holding down shift to constraint my movements and using the arrows to move it around exactly where I want it to be. I can also use this square to change the dimensions of my object. You can change both the height, width, and depth individually by using these arrows, or you can change them together using the center square. Using this button here, you can go back to your gizmo tool and move your object around then. And again, a really important thing to note is constantly changing your viewpoint to make sure that nothing's floating or way off to the side. And I'm just perfecting this placement. Great. Now I can actually adjust this to make it look a lot more realistic using my materials again in my property editor. So here I'm gonna go to the drop down and make this a metal. And I can also add a texture to the top of my surface. So here I'm going to make this a wood and I have a metal frame. So this looks a lot more realistic than having it all white. So now I'm ready to add my mannequin to my workspace. So I'm going to go into my garments, right click and say add to workspace. Here I want to make sure that both my garment and avatar is on. And I'm also going to use this translation box here to place my avatar approximately where I want it to be in my 3D space. Now to move your avatar around, you're gonna use your 3D toggle menu and then go to your skeleton view. It's important to make sure your IK is not selected and you selected that center pink little circle. Here I can just use my gizmo tool to move and adjust my avatar. If I don't wanna view it in this skeleton view, I can hit shift X. Again, it's shift X to be able to see this 3D view and I continue to move her around and place her where I want her to be. Once I have her placed where I want her to be, I'm then just going to select my garment and put my garment back on my avatar. Now I'm going to switch my gizmo to screen coordinate gizmo. This is just going to allow me to move my garment around a little bit easier. Once my garment is on my avatar, I can just simulate by hitting my space bar and she's going to just drape right onto my avatar. Now I can edit my avatar a little bit more if I'd like to, to make her look a little bit more like a mannequin and not a person by just selecting her faces and going again to material type. And here I can play around and change her to a metal or even a plastic. And I can start playing around with the reflection and everything if I'd like. This just adds another layer of realism 
to your store. Once that's all set, I can now go into my hanger folder here, which is a default folder within Glow. And here I can bring in my hanger as an avatar as well by just right clicking add. And again, I can use this translation box to get it approximately where I'd want it to be in my 3D workspace. And here I'm just gonna hit okay. And now I'm gonna use my gizmo tool to place it exactly where I want it to be. So the translation is helpful for if you know roughly where you want your object or avatar to be and you don't want to have to use your gizmo tool to place it exactly there. I'm going to jump back to my store, to my garments, and again right click and add to workspace. Here again I'm going to use my translation to place my garment roughly where I want it to be. Uncheck avatar because I only want my garment to be added. So I'm going to uncheck my avatar and hit OK. I can hit no. And now I have my garment. And I'm just going to place my garment right on my hanger. I'm going to switch back to my local coordinate gizmo. And again, changing my viewpoints constantly to make sure that my sweater is sitting exactly where I want it to sit on my hanger. I'm just going to move it over slightly. Once it's sitting exactly where I want it to sit, I can then simulate my sweater. So I can then go to my spacebar or my arrow down simulation and hit that. And that's going to allow my sweater to just drape, which is pretty cool. And now that it's draped onto my hanger, I can then turn off simulation. Now I'm going to do those exact steps for all the rest of my hangers and garments that I want on my rack. So again, it's just selecting, going to your library, right clicking, saying add to workspace, and then you can either use that translation box to get it roughly where you want it to be, or you can just rely on your gizmo. And now it's all set. And then I can do those same exact steps of selecting my piece, right clicking, using my translation, gizmo, for my folded shirts that I want to add to my rack as well. So here I'm just using my gizmo, changing around my viewpoint, and adding in all of my folded shirts. And again, changing the viewpoint is really important, and positioning it just so is also. Now, if you don't know exactly where you want your piece to be, that is totally fine. You can definitely just use your gizmo tool to move everything around. Now, as you saw, my white shirt was actually hovering above, so it's good that your eye was checking my viewpoints and making sure that everything was all set. Okay, so now this is all set. It's looking great. I'm gonna add another object to my store. Now let's say I didn't have my object in my file, in my library. So I'm gonna go to File, Import Add, OBJ. And this is how I'm gonna add an object. And here I'm going to hit Box and Open. Again, I'm gonna make sure load type is Add, Object type is avatar. I don't have to use my translation if I don't want to, and I can just hit OK. And here I have my box. And I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to go to File, Import Add, OBJ, Box 2. And again, I'm going to make sure it's Add and Avatar. And that's for if you don't have a folder already in your library with all of your objects all set up for you to just right click and add in. Now that those are all set, I'm now going to go back to my folded objects, my folded garments, and place them all in these objects. And it's, again, the exact same steps. Selecting the piece, right-clicking, add to workspace, using my gizmo tool to place it exactly where I want it to be, 
and constantly changing around my viewpoint to make sure that it's exactly where it should be. And now I have my store and all of my garments all set up in it. Now I can jump into my render window and see exactly what this looks like. So here I can go to render. I can also change around these objects as well in my material section too in type. So here I can actually make these boxes plastic if I wanted to as well. So now that this is all set, I'm going to go to render and I'm going to hit my interactive render and this is all going to start to update. And we go into everything you need to know about render in our Clo beginners guide. If you'd like to go more in depth in what the render window has to offer, I would definitely suggest checking that out. So here I'm going to go and change my size and I'm also going to change around my custom views and bring in my store custom view which I created and I'm also going to change to landscape. I can also change my lighting so since I have glass the environment that I use for my lighting is actually going to show through that glass. And I can play around with my lighting angle. Now, from what I can kind of see, it looks like my side wall is a little bit blank. So I'm actually going to go into my 3D window and add a graphic. And I'm going to add like a wall hanging to my side wall to make it look not as bare. And here I'm just going to right click, add as graphic. Click on that and again in our Clo beginners guide we go into depth on all of the different things you can do with graphics and how you can play around with all of that. So now once my graphics all set I can jump back into my render window and here I have my store all set. Now I can keep playing around or I could just hit stop and then play and render this image out. And here's the image all rendered out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching.